The first thing you'll do in Photoshop is either open a file or create a new file. So let's go over how to do both. When you launch the latest version of Photoshop CC, you may see a start screen that looks something like this. If you wanted to open an existing image, you could go to the Open button on the Start screen and click, or if you wanted to create a new image from scratch, you could use the New button on the Start screen. But there's another way to get to these same commands from anywhere in Photoshop. So even if your Start screen isn't showing, you can always go up to the File menu at the top of Photoshop and choose New or Open from there. Let's go ahead and choose Open from the File menu to open some existing image files into Photoshop. That will launch your Mac Finder or your Windows File Explorer, where you'll navigate through your file system to an image file and select it. You could select one of the practice files that come with this tutorial, as I'm doing, or you can select an image of your own. If you want to open more than one image at a time, hold the Command key on a Mac or the Control key on Windows and select another image file. Then click the Open button. Both Let's take a look at how Photoshop is laid out to help you get comfortable with your workspace. To follow along with this tutorial, you can open any image. The first interface element to get familiar with is the document window, which is right here in the center of the screen. This is where you'll work on your images. Over to the right of the document window are the panels that have a variety of image editing controls. There are more panels than just those you see in this panel column. Some of the panels are hidden behind others. For example, here we have a panel group of the Color panel and the Swatches panel. If I want to see the Swatches panel, I can just click its tab, and that brings it forward so I can use it. I'll go ahead and select a blue swatch here in the Swatches panel, and that color will be applied when I use other color features like the Brush tool. There are some panels that aren't open on the face of Photoshop. To open one of those panels, go up to the Window menu and choose from this list of alphabetical panels a panel that doesn't have a check mark. For example, I'll choose the Histogram panel. That opens the Histogram panel. Zooming and panning are ways to navigate around an image that you'll use often as you work on images in Photoshop. To practice working with the zoom and pan controls, open this image from the tutorial practice files, or open a large image of your own. Zooming means changing the magnification of the image, as you might do if you were looking at the sky through a telescope. You may want to zoom in for a closer view of part of an image, or you may want to zoom out to see more of an image on your screen. The most straightforward way to zoom is to select the Zoom tool toward the bottom of the Tools panel here. Then go up to the Options bar for the Zoom tool, where you'll find a plus icon for zooming in and a minus icon for zooming out. Let's start with the plus icon activated, which is the default. Then to zoom in, move into the image and click. And each time you click, you'll zoom in a little further. To zoom back out to see more of the image again, go back to the Options bar and this time select the minus icon, and then click several times in the image to zoom back out. If you want to zoom in again, you have to go back. Photoshop gives you lots of flexibility to change the edits that you make. In this video, we'll explore how to undo, redo, and step back in time as you're editing. You can follow along with this file from the practice files for this tutorial, or an image of your own. Let's start by making some paint strokes on this image. Select the Brush tool in the Tools panel. Then go over to the Swatches panel and click on a color there. You can use any color that you like. Move into the image and make a brush stroke. By the way, if your brush tip isn't big enough, go up to the Options bar for the Brush tool, click on the Brush Picker, and set the size there. I'll click off of that picker to close it. Let's make a couple more strokes. Go to the Swatches panel again, Select another color and stroke. And let's do that one more time. So let's say that you want to get rid of the last action that you did in Photoshop. In this case, making that pink stroke. The quick way to do that is to use a keyboard shortcut, Command plus Z on the Mac, or Control plus Z on Windows, which I'll do now. And the pink stroke goes away. I can bring it back by pressing Command plus Z again, or Control plus Z again. So that keyboard shortcut is a toggle for undoing and redoing the last action that you took. 
If you prefer to use a menu command rather than the shortcut, you can go up to the Edit menu, and there you can choose Undo, and Photoshop even tells you what action you're going to undo. And then Edit and Redo. Now, what if you want to undo more than just one step? In that case, go up to the Edit menu, and this time choose Step Backward. And you can do that up to 50 times by default. And each time, you're stepping back one action, one step in time. Similarly, you can step forward one step at a time. Edit, step forward. Edit, step forward. Edit, step forward. There's one more way that you can step through time in Photoshop, and that's using the History panel. The History panel is located here in this collapsed column of panels. If you don't see it, go up to the Window menu and choose History. I'm going to expand this panel by moving down to its bottom bar until I see a double-pointed arrow, and then dragging down. So what we see in this panel is a separate bar for each action that I just took on this image. Open, and then Saving is a critical step in Photoshop, so let's see how to do it safely. To start, open this image from the tutorial practice files. Now let's make a change to this file. Let's move this small inset photo to somewhere else in the image. To do that, go to the Tools panel and click on the first tool, the Move tool, and then move into the image, click right on the small bouquet photo, and drag it somewhere else in the image. I'll just put it here. You can put it anywhere you like. By the way, if that didn't work for you, it's probably because you're not on the right layer. We'll learn a lot more about selecting a layer later in the tutorial series, but for now, you can avoid that problem by just going over to the Layers panel and making sure that you have the small bouquet layer highlighted, and then try dragging that bouquet again. Now that we've made a change to the image, let's see what happens if we use the Save command to save the image with that change. I'll go up to the File menu, and I'll choose Save. And what happened is that Photoshop went right ahead and saved over and replaced the last version of this image, in this case, the original file that we started with. And that's something you don't often want to do. So let me show you a safer way to save that doesn't save over the last version. Let's make another change. Again, with your Move tool selected, click on that small Let's talk about how to change the size of an image in Photoshop. I suggest that you start with this image from the downloadable practice files for this tutorial. I'd like to set the size of this image so that it's a good fit for posting to a particular website, where I happen to know that the ideal image size is 900 pixels wide. Before we resize this image, let's check how big it is to start with. In most cases, you'll want to start with an image that's bigger than, or at least not a lot smaller, than the resized image that you need. That's because if you enlarge an image a lot, at some point it can start to look blurry. I'll go down to the status bar at the bottom of the document window, and I'll click and hold on the document size information. In the small window that pops up, we can see that this file is 1800 pixels wide by 1200 pixels high. Since we want to put it in a spot that's only 900 pixels wide on our website, that means we'll be scaling it down. To resize this image, I'll go up to the Image menu, and I'll choose Image Size. That opens the Image Size dialog box. If you like, you can make this window bigger by going to the bottom right corner and dragging out. Over on the left, you can see a preview of the image, and on the right, are the controls for changing image size. There's a lot of information here, but you don't have to work through all of it, particularly when you're resizing an image that If you like to print images, it can be useful for you to have a basic understanding of what image resolution means in Photoshop and how to change the resolution of an image to prepare it for print. That's done in the Image Size dialog box. If you're following along, let's open this image that you'll find in the practice files for this tutorial, and then go up to the Image menu and choose Image Size. In the Image Size dialog box, you can see the dimensions of this image reported in pixels. When an image is still on your computer, that's how we measure its size in pixels. But if we were to print this image, 
we would measure the size of the print in inches, not pixels. Down here in the resolution field, you can see the resolution that's currently set for this image. It's 100. There's nothing special about a resolution of 100, it's just a round number that I picked when I set up the file for this lesson. Now, what does resolution mean here? Well, if you read across this line from left to right, you may get a sense of it. This is telling us that resolution is a particular number of pixels per inch. In this case, 100 pixels per inch. Another way to say that is that if and when you print this image, 100 pixels out of the total 1800 across and the total 1200 down will be assigned to every printed inch. The Crop Tool is one of Photoshop's most useful tools, particularly for those of you who take lots of photographs. You can use it to improve a composition and to straighten crooked photos. I've opened this photo from the practice files for this tutorial so I can show you the basics of the Crop Tool. I'll start by selecting the Crop Tool here in the Tools panel. As soon as I do, you can see this border around the whole image. That's the Crop Box. I'll move my cursor over any of the corners or any of the edges of the crop box and drag to reshape that box. So in this case, I might drag it way in to create a very different composition than the original photograph. As you create your crop, Photoshop shows you a preview with the areas to be cropped away shaded in gray. That way, you can evaluate what it is you're about to eliminate before you finalize the crop. Now, before I finalize this crop, I want to go up to the Options bar to show you an important option there, and that is Delete Cropped Pixels. That option is checked by default. I usually like to uncheck that, because when Delete Cropped Pixels is checked, if you finalize the crop and save the image, you'll permanently delete the cropped away pixels. But, with this option unchecked, you can bring back the cropped away pixels at any time. 